In my last video, video number 83, we had a situation where we had a loan that was being repaid in an atypical way. For the first number of years, it was nine years in that case, uh, only interest was being repaid on the loan. And then at the last um, moment in time, the last year in that case, we repaid the entire uh, principal on the loan plus whatever other interest that was accrued. And we did all this by means of something called a sinking fund where we imagined depositing into some other account and letting that money grow until we could actually pay back the principal on the original loan. It was also a little strange in that our deposits into the sinking fund were not level. In this video, we'll be considering a situation where we do have a more ordinary thing. It's level payments into the sinking fund, but we won't know how long it's going to take before we can pay off the loan. That's not going to be predetermined. And we're going to find ultimately the total amount paid by the borrower of the loan, repaying the loan by investing in the sinking fund. Also, like in the last video, I want to do a second part where we look at making using a spreadsheet to make tables to see how the loan is being amortized and to also see how our sinking fund is growing over time. And we'll actually try to solve the problem with the spreadsheet as well. So here's the situation. Loan of 10000 And again, we are doing it in kind of a strange way as far as paying back. We are doing monthly interest payments at a nominal annual rate of 15%. See the 12 there, that means this is a nominal annual rate. So the monthly, the effective monthly rate would be this thing divided by 12. Monthly deposits of 100 are going into a sinking fund that earns a nominal interest rate of 9% per year. When the sinking fund reaches 10,000, then we're gonna repay the principal and also whatever other interest we owe to discharge the loan to say we don't owe any more. The goal of the problem is to find the total amount that's paid by the borrower, that's us here, over the course of the loan. Along the way, we're going to have to figure out how long are we going to pay this back. We're not told um, that we're paying for, say, five years. Okay, we're going to have to figure that out as part of what we do. So let's solve this first with formulas and by thinking about timelines, and then again we will solve it with um, a spreadsheet. Okay, so um, as far as our payments to the lender go, we don't know how long it's going to go. The nominal annual rate of 15% converts to an effective monthly rate. That's what I'm trying to write there, effective monthly rate. That's hard to see, I know. Of 0.15 divided by 12, and that is going to be 0 0.0125. Every year, every month, we're going to pay 1.25% of 10,000. That's going to be 125 starting at time one. So these are just the interest payments to the lender. Okay, we're not reducing the loan amount from the lender's point of view, at least. What about the sinking fund? We are making deposits of 100 to the sinking fund. Again, not knowing how long we're gonna go here. We've got an effective monthly rate for that one too. Of 0 0.09 divided by 12, that will be 0 0.0075. All right, so again, we're gonna pay off the loan when our sinking fund reaches 10,000. How long will that be? We can solve the following equation for the unknown n. When will this 100 times SN equal 10,000, which is equivalent to saying SN with interest rate, monthly interest rate 0 0.0075, when does that equal 100? And that's gonna be a, a, an equation we can solve using logarithms. This is gonna be the same as 1.0075 to the N minus one over 0 0.0075 equals 100. And that's going to mean uh, multiply both sides by 0 0.0075, you'll get 0.75 on the right, then add 1. 1. 1.0075 to the n must be 1.75. n is going to equal the natural log of 1.75 divided by the natural log of 1.0075, which is not going to be a whole number, but 
That just means we need to make one extra payment at the end. That's going to be smaller probably. So using the calculator here, let's go 1.0075 natural log. Is this, store that in register zero. Natural log of 1.75 is that, divide by what's in register zero. This is about 74.9, so it's going to take 75 months. Round that up, 75 months to pay off. And you do round up. Um, if this were, say, 74.1, I would still round up to 75. 75 months to pay off. The last payment is going to be a little less than 100 into the sinking fund, so that I'll get the balance of the sinking fund to be 10,000 to go ahead and then pay off the loan. So um, let's go ahead and figure out what the balance would be at time 75, uh, and then probably it'll be it'll be over 10,000. We can just subtract off whatever amount over 10,000 it'll be. So take 100 times s 75.0075. What is that equal to? Using this same formula again, but now we plug in n equals 75. 1.0075 to the 75th power. 75 months, by the way, would be six years and three months. Subtract one, divide by 0 0.0075, multiply by 100. After 75 months, the balance on our sinking fund is 10,018.33. Uh, take off 1833 then from the final amount as far as what we end up paying. So the, the total outlays now are going to be 125 times 75 uh, and then 100 times 75 added on to that. Subtract 1833. So that's going to ultimately give us 225 times 75 minus 1833. This is a times here. This is a decimal. 225 times 75. Subtract 1833. Our total outlays are 16,856.67. 16, 16,856.67. That is the answer. Okay. All right, so that's the end of part one of this video. Here was the problem again. Uh, now I'm going to make uh, a new part that's got a spreadsheet. All right, now we're on to part two of video number 84. We're, we're continuing exercise 3.3.3 and solving it via a spreadsheet. In this video, number 84, we're doing it in Google Sheets. It's a Google spreadsheet. In the last video, we used Excel. Um, they work pretty much the same way, just look a little different. Uh, in the menus especially, but uh, they're basically the same as far as formulas go. I'm going to go quicker through the spreadsheet than I did in video number 83, so if you're new to spreadsheets, you probably want to re-watch video number 83 or watch it for the first time if you haven't, where I will go more slowly through the spreadsheet. First of all, I put the loan amount here for problem 3.3.3, that's 10,000. Let's go ahead and use currency right away, say in dollars. The nominal annual loan rate in our problem was 15%, type of 0.15 here. Uh, let's use a formula for the effective monthly loan rate. Equals, again, signifies that you want to do some math. Actually, I didn't need an equal sign in B4, but here in B5, I want to use an equal sign to do a formula. Take what's in cell B4 and divide it by 12 to get the effective monthly loan rate. Uh, use the cell reference that allows you to both change the cell numbers and also and get things updated correctly and also copy and paste in what are good ways here. So 1.25% is the monthly interest rate, the effective monthly interest rate. What about the interest payment on the loan then? Every month to the lender you are paying the loan amount times the monthly interest rate equals B3 times B5 will be $125 in this case, but again if I made changes like made this a 20,000, then things get updated correctly. That's one benefit of formulas. What about your sinking fund deposit? That was 100 in this problem. Um, it's a little different than usual. You're 
you're depositing a certain fixed amount. We picked to be 100 here. It could have been something different. It could have been 50. It could have been 200. Uh, what's un part of what's unknown in this problem was how long is it going to take for your sinking fund to grow to over 10,000 so you can pay back the loan. We solved it by hand with formulas and a calculator. In the first part of the video, we'll solve it just by experimenting with the spreadsheet here in the second part of the video. The nominal annual sinking fund rate was 9%. Use a formula to find the effective monthly sinking fund rate. Take B8 and divide it by 12. All right, so now we're ready to set up our tables. Let's first do it for the sinking fund. I'll go ahead and just put a zero here and here to begin with. One advantage Excel had over Google Sheets here in 2017 is that I couldn't figure out how to make subscripts here for these T's that you see. Uh, whereas in Excel, I could do it. Now, that seems like something Google Sheets should be able to do, and maybe you know, you're know you watching this 100 years from now, and it de definitely does it for you, or some other spreadsheet definitely does it easily for you, but it didn't do that. So that's this is not it here. It's I sub T, interest that you gain at time T. Here is DT, that's your um, deposit at time T. Here's OB sub T, your outstanding balance for your sinking fund at time T. Maybe I should just call it BT for balance because it's not like you owe something with the sinking fund. All right, we are ready to use formulas to that we will copy and paste downward. Uh, the next month is going to be the previous month, the previous time plus one. You see I'm typing in equals B13 plus one in cell B14. If I copy and paste it to B15, it'll get updated to an equals B14 plus one. So these numbers keep going up by one each time. The interest that you earn, at time one here is going to be the previous outstanding balance times the effective monthly interest rate. So equals E13 times B9, but though I want the E13 to get updated to an E14 and an E15 and an E16, B9 I want to stay fixed and I can do dollar B dollar nine to make it fixed. Technically the first dollar fixes the column B and the second dollar fixes the row nine and you only really need the second one for this situation where I'm copying and pasting downward, but to play it safe, let's use both of them. And that's usually good enough for most purposes. Let's change this to dollars here too. How about your deposit? That's gonna come from cell B7 and keep that fixed. So use dollars. These dollars again, keep the cell reference fixed as I copy and paste. They do not mean money. How about your new outstanding balance? It's the preceding outstanding balance plus the interest you earn plus the next deposit. So it's the outstanding balance right after that last deposit. All right, this is now ready to copy and paste. Click and drag, lower right corner. Pretending we don't know how far we have to go, we just stop somewhere and we see our balance is not above 10,000 yet. Keep going. Still not above 10,000. Keep going. And there we have it, row uh, 88, month 75, which is six years and three months. We get a balance for the first time above 10,000. I don't need that extra 1833, so I can actually make this last deposit be 8167 to get that final balance at time 75 to be exactly 10,000 to now pay off that sinking fund. Let's graph this balance in our sinking fund as a function of time. I can highlight all these numbers and do an insert chart. And probably I prefer a line graph. There we go. An increasing and concave up graph from my balance in my sinking fund as a function of time. Um, technically, it's really only at those integer values that I'm thinking about it changing, but we'll go ahead and connect the dots anyway. All right, let's do something similar for the outstanding balance on the loan from your perspective, not the lender's perspective. Your balance is gonna go down over time because you've got the sinking fund. Really what you're graphing in the outstanding balance over here is your net debt. From the lender's perspective, they don't know what, that you've got a sinking fund necessarily. So you just, you know, you owe them 10,000, then interest accrues during the next month. And so the balance gets above 10,000, but then you pay that interest. 125 in this case, so the balance goes back down to 10,000. The lender doesn't know what you're doing, but you do. And so from your perspective, you want your net debt really for the outstanding balance. Let's copy and paste the months over first. 
All right, and the outstanding balance right here, that's going to come from cell B3. I don't need to bother with dollar signs here because I'm not going to copy and paste this formula. What are the correct formulas to use here in these cells? Oops, didn't mean to do that. Go back here. What are the correct formulas? Here in cell H14, Remember, this is from your perspective, so it's not just the outstanding previous outstanding balance times the monthly interest rate in cell B5. You need to subtract off whatever interest you've earned in your sinking fund. Now, at this time, at times 1, C14 is 0, but for other times further on, it's going to be something positive. Go ahead and plug in the cell reference C14 there. This will be the correct formula for the interest that you pay, so to speak, in uh, any given month. What is your principal reduction? Uh, well, remember that with ordinary loan payback schemes, you can think of the principal reduction as being the preceding outstanding balance minus the new outstanding balance. That's one way to think of it. Um, from the perspective of sinking fund, then, you can think of it, you know, again, the bank just thinks you're staying around 10000 From your perspective, you can think of it in terms of your sinking fund as the current outstanding balance minus the preceding one. So we can do equals E14 minus E13 here. What's the new outstanding balance from your perspective? Take the old outstanding balance in cell J13 and subtract the principal reduction from your perspective in cell 8 I14. So your balance from your perspective went down by 100. When we get down to month 75 then, the balance should be zero. And it is, that tells you you did it right. Uh, these numbers you see here are negative. That just means you are earning more interest than you're paying effectively with your sinking fund compared to your outstanding debt. And if you graph this outstanding balance as a function of time, it does follow the ordinary pattern of being decreasing and concave down. Highlight those, insert another chart, make it a line graph again. There you see a, a decreasing and concave down graph for your net debt as a function of time, as is typical with loans. You're paying more toward interest at first, less toward principal, as time goes by, you pay more and more toward principal, less and less toward interest. Okay, so again, we solved the problem um, as far as the months go with this sinking fund perspective. I guess we didn't solve the problem statement itself as far as your total outlays, um, but that would just be uh, the 125 times... Uh, 75 plus 100 times 75, and then you could think, 74, excuse me, and then you can think of the final payment to your sinking fund. That was $81, and if I can get to it here, come on, $81.67 uh, for your final amount. The final answer to the problem was $16,856.67.